Well, hello, gang. Welcome to the next phase of Crash's Scratch Build Club, where we're building the EQSC plane. And at this point here, we're actually going to be doing a fuselage. The last couple of weeks, we've worked on a wing. Now we're ready to do the fuselage. So what we're going to do first, a couple of things that I want to explain to you. I'm kind of, along with this build, I'm kind of doing some experimentation. Um, I had mentioned on the last podcast some things that I wanted you to be aware of. If you've been following along and listening, I suggested that perhaps maybe you don't cut out your parts yet until after we look at this video. And uh, there were some things that I wanted to tell you. First off, if you look here, I've gone ahead on my top and bottom pieces for the fuselage. Um, I've already got the lightning holes cut away. And if you look at this closely, and if you've examined the plans of this aircraft, you'll see that the long piece already has a lightning hole cut, and it also has uh, a relief here for the vertical stabilizer. Uh, that tells us, hey, this is going to be a, a low wing configuration on this aircraft. I've already built the high wing, now we're going to do the low wing. Um, anyway, normally I would tell you don't do the lightning holes until after the fuselage has been completely built, and it's been completely, um, you know, all glued up, and then after the fact is when you want to go and cut out your lightning holes. Why, you may ask? Well, the reason is because what you get into, uh, if you've gone and plucked balsa out of your hobby shop or your Michaels or arts and crafts store or whatever, you may find that, you know, balsa tends to vary. You may get some dense material. You may get some real lightweight material. Either way, uh, those materials are going to tend to bend and... Um, you know, we're going to bend the two pieces for the, the aft end of this fuselage. You know, we're going to have a parallel side, uh, parallel sides on this thing as we go down. And then finally it's going to come to a point at the tail. Well, if your fuselage sides are, you know, one piece is a rigid piece of balsa and maybe the other piece is a lighter, more closer to contest grade balsa, well, it's going to be real easy to get a warp in there. It's going to be real easy to break, uh, to break a piece. Uh, you know, these are all things that we can handle, but I've just found that it's actually easier to do it with uh, doing the lightning holes after everything's been glued up and everything is strong and everything. Um, I hope that makes sense. If not, email me as always. Um, I'm doing the top and bottom fuselage on this particular design with the, those relief uh, lightning holes already cut out just because I'm just going to kind of do an experiment with it. However, on the fuse um, sides, well, I've just got them pinned on here. I've got them uh, inked in so that I can know where to cut these things out later. I've used my templates to go ahead and cut everything out, but I've not cut the lightning holes. I've just simply traced them. We'll cut them out after the fuselage is all glued up and complete. So, the way we're going to get started here... Oh, one other thing. Uh, if you're in the one of the flat printer owners and you've gone over to flatforum.com and downloaded my CNC cut files for this project and you've tried to assemble this, then you're already going to know, hey, something's kind of buggy here. These two pieces in my files are actually cut oversize. And it was my intention to share that with you uh, in this video here before you cut out the top and the bottom pieces. Uh, not only don't cut the lightning holes out yet, but also you may want to uh, notice that the width here is actually uh, a quarter inch overall width wider than what they need to be. Now, why do you ask? Well, it just there are things that happen, and we, you'll see this when we start this build, but the way we're going to build it, uh, when we get ready to glue the, the fuse sides and the formers in place onto, you know, the top and the bottom, there's going to be a chance for some bowing of the sides. If we wait and we, if we actually cut the top and the bottom oversized, well then that allows us to have that, you know, slight bowing out uh, in the middle of the fuselage and it allows us to just go back and sand all that down later and then we're all good. So anyway, that's where we are and I've got all my pieces cut out and I'm just gonna lay all this stuff aside and we'll get started. Way we're gonna go, I've got a little trick and I promised a little trick when we got started with this project uh, in my last podcast. So um, 
let's let's talk about that right now and I'm gonna to try to keep this thing down to just a couple of videos uh, I'm gonna try not to go long as wordy as I tend to get but with this particular design we're gonna make a few measurements and get some stuff worked out here the one of the things that you want to have here is a little carpenter square this guy here is plastic yet it works real well um, for years I've used plastic squares like you'd use in high school drawing things that you can have that you know they will draw an accurate enough 90 degree line to your work uh, within you know it's it's close enough for what we're doing here with airplanes this is going to be kind of hard to see but this is another little you know gadget gizmo that catch the reflection right but this also is something that you can use it's again 50 cents is all these things cost and they prove to be just really good modeling tools when we're when we're crafting a balsa airplane so I have a couple of these things here what we're gonna do I've gone ahead and jumped ahead on this but once you if you've accurately cut out your parts to your templates then you're gonna find that the where the firewall glues is exactly 90 degrees to the baseline of our um, of our fuselage this is the fuselage side so that just that already tells us bam right there that's where the firewall is going to go from that absolute tip at the bottom use your ruler measure back and three and seven eighths inches and make a line again I've used my square uh, to you know to make a fairly you know good vertical line you can see that anyway uh, and then I go back again from that same point the tip of the nose of the side of the fuselage come back and make a line at ten and a half inches back and then trace your line I'm just using a felt tip pen but that's how we're gonna get started with this lay that out uh, you only need to necessarily do that on one of the insides of your fuse sides and the next thing you're gonna do again like I say on the fuse bottom and the fuse top I've actually cut these things oversized. I've allowed for an extra eighth inch of material on each side. Just an oversized, we'll sand it down to finish later. But one of the things that I've done is I've cut it, or I've, I've actually, when I put my, when you put your template on your wood to cut out the top and the bottom fuselage sides, fuselage parts, then I would say, as a rule of thumb, it would be best if you can just go like maybe a solid eighth inch over the line on each side um, just to keep everything you know nice and straight if you follow my template and then you use the relief part you know we can see probably here the relief for the vertical then you can uh, use that and go what I've basically done here is right down the middle of this bottom plank I've drawn a line so I measured this total width in my case it was two and a quarter inches I believe that sound right two and a quarter to it anyway and then uh, yes that sounds right anyway uh, yeah two and a quarter and then I basically allow for an eighth on each side I find dead center of that and I trace a line all the way down and it lines up with our vertical so those are the marks that you're gonna make for reference and I'll let you jump away and uh, uh, get started on those again you want a vertical mark from the nose three and seven eighths inch back make another one on the fuse from the nose back ten and a half inches back this is going to be for our first former and then for our second former uh, and of course the firewall will go on the front so anyway you make those and we'll join back in the next video and we'll talk about how we're going to assemble these things